Hi guys, this is going to be a little addendum to my trimming video where I talk about bevel angle and how the angle that your tool uh, attacks the clay is going to influence the surface that you're left with. And so the first thing to think about is the anatomy of the tool itself. And this one's really hard to see, but if you look at your own trim tool, what you should see is a loop of steel that is completely flat on the inside of that bent shape. Uh, it doesn't really matter what shape it is, that's generally how they're made. So it's a flat plane all the way around. And then on the outside edges, you've got bevels that are cut into the clay, uh, or sorry, into the metal. And so those bevels are what create the knife edge. If it was just a strap of steel, it would be really dull. Uh, so they're ground, um, usually at about maybe a 35 angle, um, 35 degree angle, maybe even 45, it just depends. Uh, this one's been ground so many times, it's just whatever I happen to do on my grinding wheel. Um, so if you think about the way that you're removing clay, if you imagine two different scenarios, one is you've got a carrot in your hand and you wanna peel it. You can take the knife and you can scrape with the blade perpendicular to the carrot and it's gonna make that fuzzy kind of surface, it, it's gonna scrape the carrot, um, and you're gonna be left with this raggedy looking carrot. Or you get a really sharp knife, and you run it just barely nicking down below the surface, and you swoop that knife along where the blade is slicing off the peel, uh, and that's why they invented carrot peelers, to kind of keep your blade at that sort of an angle. Uh, and you get a really smooth carrot that has the skin still removed, um, but it doesn't look all raggedy from scraping. and so if you take that life experience you may have had in the kitchen and apply that to trimming pottery, um, we don't want to hold our tool like this so that the blade is coming in perpendicular and scraping. I'll do it for a second. And it does work. I mean, it's gonna take some clay off, but it comes off in these really rough sections. And I don't know if you can see um, how rough that little patch is that I trimmed, but it really, I call it raising the grain. It, it reveals every little piece of sand that was in the clay and it makes a surface that looks almost like volcanic rock or something. It's not at all smooth. The area that was ribbed has kind of a sheen to it where all of the clay particles were laid down into the same plane, almost burnishing. And this area that I've trimmed just looks ragged. And so that wasn't really trimming, that was scraping. And you can scrape a pot, um, but let's learn to modify that bevel angle. Don't hold it like a, a baseball bat or something. We're going to hold it more like a pencil uh, so we have control. So that's my grip. I've got it. Uh, it's held so that the handle of the tool tilts back towards me at about a 45 degree angle and I'm holding it right down near the end. Sometimes I'll even put a finger on the loop of metal itself. So I'm really in control. And what that does is it brings the bevel of the tool to where it is instead of scraping the clay, it's shearing it off uh, the way a carrot peeler takes a peeling off of a carrot. So let me start by making a foot, coming down from above. You see my tool is kind of angled away from me at 45 degrees, and that's putting the cutting, the business in there at the right angle to just shear the clay. And instead of getting like weird little scrapings, I'm getting this basically almost burnished looking trimming. Everything's coming off. It's taking less um, pressure. I'm not having to push into the clay. It's just removing it in a big, beautiful ribbon. And I'm just following it down as it removes clay. I'm following it down deeper into the profile of the pot. Well, it looks like it's going to have a fairly pronounced looking foot. I don't really need to bring it in much more, but I'm going to try to just have it be not quite such a high foot. That's looking pretty good. Now, instead of holding it overhand like this, I see many, many students holding it in their hand, and that automatically puts you at uh, 90 degrees to the pot. I'm again going to switch it to this pencil grip, keep my hand on it, and I'm going to take another pass. I'm going to go back over that area that I butchered a minute ago and then I'm going to stop the wheel and show you and the part that actually got trimmed 
is already looking smoother and better. It doesn't have that ragged, um, porous looking appearance. Let's take another pass. So if you're new to this concept, how do you find the right cutting angle? Well, there's a really good way to do it. It's something I learned early on when I was doing wood turning. Um, you're gonna run the back of the tool against the pot initially. And really very little should happen. It's kind of scraping a little bit off with the back. Um, but when it's perfectly straight up and down to the pot, you're not actually engaging the edge at all. So no cutting, just a little rubbing. And then I'm gonna back it down, to the handle back down towards me until just the point where the blade engages. There it is. So my handle is coming down and away at about a 45, and that should be the optimal bevel angle for producing a really nice, smooth cut. And what I'm getting here is almost like the edge is cutting, but then the rest of the bevel is kind of burnishing that surface back down. And for me, that just makes such a, a huge difference in how the pot looks. Um, it's more finished looking and there's less of a contrast between the area that was ribbed when you were throwing it and the area that's trimmed. So I'm gonna come back and just take one more pass. Clean up that curve. Yeah, that's starting to look really great. And this is really sandy clay too, and it's already looking that smooth. If you're really obsessed with kind of removing all evidence of trimming, you can come back with a rib and rib over the part that you trimmed. But honestly, if you get good with your bevel angle, you don't need to take that extra step. You're gonna get it fairly smooth just right off the tool. And I love that. Uh, I loved that when I was wood turning where I could turn a, a shape and not have to get a bunch of sandpaper involved. Uh, same thing with trimming your clay. It's very satisfying. All right, so I'm just gonna finish out, trim the inside. Now that looked like I was being naughty and holding it the wrong way, but it was up in my hand, so I was getting a good angle on it. Could have been higher, it's a little bit rough. When you're trimming the inside of the foot, it is important every once in a while to kind of clear out the trimmings. Uh, if you let them build up, sometimes they'll get stuck back down. I can go a little deeper. That clay felt still pretty stout in the middle there. Left plenty of clay for a nice deep foot, which explains why it looks so deep on the outside. Now we're getting we're getting a little bit of a, a resonance there that's gonna tell me, all right, we're close to finished thickness. And then I wanna take one final pass to kind of give it a little swirl. So I got a slower wheel and I'm gonna lift up when I get to the center. Hopefully when I lift all these trimmings off, it's gonna look lovely. Yeah, it's pretty great. Okay, gonna finish up the profile of the outside of the foot. I don't want to get rid of that shadow line, but I want to kind of refine it a little bit. And then I'm going to bevel the outside edge, bevel the inside edge, and then burnish with my fingers. Get a nice round over. This bowl was a little on the wonky side to begin with, so I'm kind of just letting it have uh, a little latitude to wander around. My recollection is that this clay was incredibly too stiff, and I still tried to work with it and had to fight with it the entire time. So Sometimes when you've had that kind of an experience with a, a piece of clay, you're ready to let it kind of do a little bit of what it wants and stop fighting so much. All right, so that's it. Um, I've got a nice burnished foot. Uh, the edges are rounded over. 
I got a nice little swirl in the middle and this outside surface has got just about the same sheen as the rest of the pot because of that bevel angle. So give that a try the next time you're trimming. Uh, really be aware, try out that technique where you put it on there perpendicular and then drop that handle back just to the point where you start to engage the cutting edge and that's your perfect angle and just kind of feel it and work with it. Obviously if at some point you're finding that it's not cutting anymore, try just going a little bit farther. But Dropping the handle down horizontal so that the blade is engaging in a scraping manner is always going to produce a surface that wants to chatter, that wants to pick up grit, uh, and doesn't actually give you very much control over the kind of shape that you're creating at the trimming stage. And so hopefully that's going to give you a hand um, being more confident with shaping your feet and um, enjoy practicing it.